I'm holding a German short hair pointer puppy. We breed German short hair pointers. We're very familiar with German short hair pointers. But guess what guys? GSPs aren't the right dog for everyone. Hey guys, Kat here from Standing Stone, and this is Snickerdoodle from our Quest Thunder Litter, and we're going to help you pick the right puppy, or at least help you start thinking about the things you need to think about to pick the right puppy. So the first thing you need to determine is what is your purpose for getting a puppy? What is your purpose for getting a dog and adding that to your family? Are you looking for a hunting dog? Are you looking for a hunting dog that's going to be versatile or a flushing dog or just a pointing breed dog? So choose that purpose. Maybe you're just looking for an adventure dog and you're very active and you want a dog to go hiking and camping and head to the lake with you. And maybe you're looking for a family dog that can chill out in the house and be part of your family and get along well with your other dogs and your kids. Once you've determined what your purpose is, and maybe it's all three, you want all of the things, then you need to start thinking about what breed fits that purpose. So I'm holding a German short hair pointer puppy. We breed German short hair pointers. We're very familiar with German short hair pointers, but guess what guys? GSPs aren't the right dog for everyone. So if when you're determining what your purpose is, that doesn't fall in line with what a GSP is, that's okay. Pick a different breed. Um, I'm gonna be holding German short hair pointer puppies the entire video here, but that doesn't mean you have to be picking a GSP. Who wants to be held next? You do, come here. Oh, my big puppies. These guys are getting so big. They're eight weeks old and getting ready to go to their forever homes. So I've got chocolate chip with me. If you couldn't tell, we've got a cookie theme going here this time. Um, so once you've determined your breed based on your purpose, whether that's a GSP, whether that's a Labrador, whether that's a small little dog like a Chihuahua, whatever your purpose is, there's still things that you need to be considering within the breed. So within a breed, not every dog is created equal. There are lots of variants when it comes to a breeding program and to a breed. Sometimes my lips get stuck on my teeth. Sometimes my lips sometimes get stuck on my teeth. teeth. You think it looks weird, but I can't help it. Oh no. My lip just gets stuck on my teeth. Deal with it. Sorry, he was just too cute to resist. So um, within a breed, short hairs for example, there's going to be different ends of that spectrum. And you wanna find the part of that spectrum that fits what you're looking for. So if that's a family oriented foot hunting companion that's versatile and can go waterfall hunting with you, but also head to the lake and back and point naturally, you know, those are things that we're specifically breeding for. So you're gonna wanna think about that and find a breeder that's breeding for those characteristics so that you're not just getting a GSP, you're getting the right GSP. Okay, who's next? Sugar says it's her turn. Come here, little sugar doll. So once you've chosen your breeder by researching what they're breeding for and that their characteristics line up with what you're looking for out of a puppy. Um, and then that breeder, things that you wanna consider when you're choosing that breeder, I mean, is are they going to maintain a relationship with you? You want somebody that when you need a question answered, when you have a concern about the puppy that you've just taken home, you can get a hold of them. It's a whole relationship. It's somebody that you can rely on for information and as a resource for the life of that puppy, which could be 15, 16, 18 years. Um, so it's definitely somebody that you wanna be able to have a relationship with. And that breeder needs to be somebody that's gonna stand behind the puppies they're producing, whether that's temperament and biddability and compatibility with your family to the overall health of your puppy. Um, those are things that you wanna consider when choosing a breeder as well as you want to have somebody that's easy to get a hold of. So when you do have a question, because believe me, you will have questions. Puppies come with a whole gamut of issues and things, potty training, clicker training, crate training that you may have questions about. And your breeder should be a good resource for that. 
You also should be choosing a breeder um, that is happy to show you their facility, happy to talk to you and show you their dogs so that you can see a real life example of what um, they are producing. If you wanna come out and tour our facility, we're happy to set up appointments. If you wanna meet the dogs that are part of our breeding program, we're happy to let you interact with them. We're happy to show you um, their hunting ability, their personalities, things like that. So that's really important um, is to choose a breeder that's going to be doing those things. Then once you've done all of this research of finding your purpose, picking your breed, then picking your breeder, you're going to need to trust your breeder to make good recommendations. Okay, you're next. Come here. Oh, my little oatmeal, oatmeal cream pie cookie. Yeah. So then once your breeder has recommended a litter that you trust, you need to be patient. Finding the right puppy in the right litter may not happen overnight. You may not be getting a puppy next week, tomorrow, next year. You need to be able to trust that your breeder that you've chosen and researched is going to make a recommendation that's going to be the right fit for you. Because like I mentioned, these puppies are gonna be a part of your family for 15 years or more. And you wanna make sure that it's the right puppy and the right fit for your family and what you're looking for. So trust your breeder to pick the right litter for you. Within our breeding program, we have litters throughout the year and not every litter is going to have the same characteristics. Obviously, they're different parentages. And so when I'm making a recommendation for a client based on the information they've given me of what they're looking for, for their purpose, I'm going to make recommendations on my litters. And I'm going to say that A, B, or C litters would be a really good fit for what you're looking for. I may not recommend litter Z to somebody that is just starting out with getting a German short hair or it's their first hunting dog because I know that that breeding, that that litter is going to produce some very powerful independent dogs that need to go to the right homes. So trust what your breeder tells you after you've chosen a breeder that you can trust. Got it? Make sense? Okay, come here monster man. Then last, but not least, picking your puppy. You've been patient, you've done your research, you've thought really hard about what you're looking for out of a puppy. Now it's time for the fun part, actually getting to pick your puppy and take them home with you. So my recommendation is try and be as colorblind to the process as possible. Within a short hair, there's typically liver dogs, black dogs, and a lot of color combinations in between, from patches to ticking to roaning. And I know that that's the case for other breeds as well. And you really wanna look at the overall package. You wanna look at temperament and the compatibility with your family. And even within a litter, you're gonna have spectrums of this is the most laid back puppy in the litter, this is the wild child of the litter. And though that litter is fairly consistent, there's still going to be some ends to that spectrum. So again, trust your breeder and decide on the puppy based on some recommendations and information they give you. Typically, people are picking puppies based on some pictures, maybe coming out and playing with the puppies one morning or one afternoon, and then making a decision that way. Well, your breeder has just spent the last eight weeks with those puppies, getting to know them very, very well. So take their recommendations into consideration when making your choice. Also, keep in mind that not everyone is looking for the same things out of the same litter. Um, your purpose is different than someone else's purpose. You may be looking for that one or two times a year hunting companion that's going to be a couch potato family dog the rest of the time. So picking the more laid back puppy in that litter might be a good fit for you. Or you may be looking for a potential breeding prospect that you wanna to take to the maximum level of training and titling. And that dog is going to be different than the most laid back puppy in the litter. When we're choosing puppies, I'm always looking for the puppy that's going to be the next best thing for our program. We're always trying to improve the breed. You are heavy, you truly are a monster. You're living up to your name, man. Um, so we're trying to always pick the puppy that we can add to our breeding program and continue improving the breed. Sometimes I'm looking for a male. Sometimes I'm looking for a female. Sometimes I'm looking for a black and white puppy. Sometimes I'm looking for a liver and white puppy. 
but I'm always looking for a puppy that has the hunting ability, temperament that's going to add to our breeding program and continue moving it in the right direction. So I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video and that it has helped you consider some things that you maybe hadn't thought about before when it comes to picking a puppy. There's a whole process <laughs> There's a whole process involved when it comes to choosing a puppy, and it starts with choosing your purpose. If you guys have questions, put them in the comments below, and we will see you in our next video.